Welcome to WP Coffee Talk. Thank you to our sponsor, Helix Managed WordPress Hosting, for both their sponsorship and hosting our site, WPCoffeeTalk.com. Now on to our episode. Welcome to another episode of WP Coffee Talk, where I get to talk to my WordPress friends, old and new, about um, WordPress and what they do in the community. So tonight, I am um, talking to one of my, excuse the term, Ben, but oldest WordPress friends, my original WordPress friends. Um, ben Dunkel, how are you tonight? Great. How about you? I'm doing really well, thanks. I'm Good. excited to have you on the show. You're one of the first people that I saw at a WordCamp ever as you stood up and told us what was going to happen for the day at the, at the uh, what do you call it, the morning announcements or whatever we, the opening remarks, I guess is the right term. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was like, wow, that's somebody who must be like really famous in WordPress because he's like talking to all of us. So, and now after all these years, um, I caught you as one of my friends. So that's, it's great to have you here. Thanks so much for being here. I would oh, sure. love to have Tell me a little bit about, you know, introduce yourself. Tell us, you know, I, I already said your name, but tell us what you do um, for a living, what you do with WordPress, and kind of give us the Ben Dunkel introduction. Okay. Um, I live in Buffalo, New York, and I teach college at Canisius College. It's my full-time job. But I do also a lot of work with WordPress. Uh, I make a lot of WordPress websites. I help people with their WordPress websites. I write up. I write, I have a plugin that I work on for WordPress. Um, I run WordCamps, I run uh, WordPress meetups, and uh, I attend a lot of WordPress events. So a good deal of my time is spent in and around WordPress ecosystem. Um, but other than that, the teaching, I teach graphic design, I teach web design. Um, I also make a lot of artwork. I do a lot of drawings and little paintings, and then I do a lot of digital art, I make fonts, and. Uh, icons, um, illustrations, and that sort of thing. Tell us yeah. a little bit about the icons that you've made for WordPress. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, that Those came around in uh, first in 2008. There was a contest to uh, award the, well, not really the award, it was just an open sourcing of the design of the interface rehaul. So um, they basically said there's um, a need for icons in the, in the dashboard. And right now, WordPress doesn't have any because it's just all text. And it was, you know, a major overhaul between, I think it was version 2.6 2. to 2.7. And um, if you look at past versions, you'll see the big difference that happened there. Uh, and then the newer version featured icons, iconography to identify the different par parts of the dashboard. So they wanted to have a unique icon set. Uh, and to let somebody in the community design it. So when I heard about the contest, I thought, hey, well, I'll definitely enter the contest, see what happens. And so I made the icons, submitted them, and they voted on them, like the community voted. And there were um, actually two sets that were uh, awarded the top award, and then mine was one of them. So the other one was available as a secondary set. And then uh, after that, the kind of job of maintaining the icons, making new ones if they had to introduce a new feature or um, a lot of plugin authors would contact me and ask for an icon custom made for their plugins. And so that was a big um, time, uh, a lot of time spent making icons, fixing up icons. When the resolution became too low, we had to do them in 32. They started off at 16 by 16 and I had to up res them to 32. And, um, and then 64, I think at one point, and Eventually, it got to be too hard to deal with, so we switched the icons to a flat set, and that was in WordPress 3. Point, I'm going to say 3.0, but it might have been 3.1 or 2. I can't remember. But uh, that that was a complete another complete overhaul of the interface, um, where the icons and the general look and feel became much more flat. Is the term. So that's been my thing. And then since then, I've been uh, contributing to the um, maintenance of the the flat icons. It's a font called Dashicons, and um, they need to be maintained and updated when we need new ones. And so I do help out with that. Um, and that's really what I've been doing with uh, the icons. That's really awesome. So your name is forever associated as part of the history of WordPress. Yeah. yeah so. That's really cool. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think mine is anywhere in there yet, but I'm working on it. You never know. Well, you are. <laughs> that's you are. Well, not in the official. Um, I'll figure out and find it. Update. 
write some things. Yeah, exactly. Someday I'll make my mark. <laughs> yeah. I like to think my mark's other places, though. No, so it's already been made, so. It's all good. Yeah. So um, I ask everybody to show me their mug. So show me the mug you've got with you today. Uh, yeah. Um, I have a lot of really cool mugs, but this one is probably my favorite. It's just a um, mug that my brother-in-law's father, uh, he's a potter. Uh, he was always an engineer and a, um, uh, he worked with uh, metal, he uh, owned a machine shop, but then after he retired, he started getting into pottery. And, uh, this is one of his mugs, so he's really, really precise. Like everything about this is probably not going to be too clear, but it's the, the perfect mug, you know, it's like the, the shape of it and the, the weight, the weight. Of everything about it is like, you can tell somebody who's, he's Swiss, so you, he's like, everything is just, has to be just right. So uh, yeah, that's my favorite mug. One of my favorites, I've got a lot more actually, um, if I had my whole group, which are over in my other office, I might have picked a different one, but this one's probably even out of, out of those my favorite. It looks like it holds a lot of coffee too. It did, but then I drank it, but there's so many, <laughs> a couple of dribbles left in there. Yeah. Well, I'm reusing some of my mugs. I, I don't have enough to have one for every single week of my show, but um, so I've, I've got my WordCamp Hamilton 2018 mug today. Oh, and yeah. I've got that. That's yeah. it in the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love know. this. I the 2019 one. Oh yeah, the ones that we just got a couple weeks ago. Those yeah. are really cool too. Um, I drank all my coffee as well, but what I love about this one is the dark inside versus the light outside. It's just kind of, it's kind of cool. Plus mm. you can't tell there's stains in the bottom, mm -hmm. so it always feels like a clean cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. If it's black inside, yeah, you don't have to worry about like, if you can't see it, it's not there. Exactly. Yeah. There are no germs because, you know, I can't yeah. see them either. <laughs> just That's fine. awesome. So you are one of the earliest adopters of all my WordPress friends that I know because, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you're talking you know, like 2.0 and things like that. And, you know, I, I have not been in WordPress as long as you have. So tell us how you got started with WordPress because I love ever hearing everybody's origin stories about like how they kind of found their way in. Yeah, sure. Well, I've been doing web um, development, web well, web coding. It's hard to say what web development really is, but I've been making websites since the 90s. And um, I started getting into PHP in the early 2000s and trying to see if there was ways to streamline making a website so that it wasn't just a bunch of flat files. And then I came across a few different tools. One of them was WordPress or BB. What was it called back then? It was Cafe Press. Uh, and then there was a few others and I was just tinkering really more or less. I had my own kind of templating system where I would use includes and variables to like kind of up or speed up the process of making a website. But um, when I first really got opened my eyes to it was I had a student who was a, you know, just a brilliant student who um, he was in my advanced web class and he built uh, the website that he was designed to do. He built it using WordPress. And I was like, how did you build it with WordPress? WordPress is a, a blogging tool. You know, where's the blog going to go? And he's like, you know, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be a blogging tool. You can, <clears throat> you can make it look however you want. And you can, you know, leverage the admin area as a way to, you know, enable your client to uh, maintain their site, you know, update their site and so on. So that got me really interested. So, um, and that was probably 05, 06 maybe. Uh, so that... I really dug, dug my heels in and got into WordPress at that point. I installed it, started playing with it, and I may have made a site or two with it. But then um, I, you know, I started getting more and more aware of how the growth was really starting there. Uh, and it was starting to emerge from all those other tools. Um, so I started following it and keeping track and then um, didn't really get involved with the community. Actually, the first time I got involved with the community was when I posted a blog, um, a post on my blog, that said, let's make a let's do a Buffalo WordPress meetup group. I don't even know if I called it meetup group, but and then um, Andy Staple read the blog somehow, and so uh, he emailed me and said, um, "Yeah, let's do it." So I met Andy at that point. It was on Hurdle in, the, in like a cafe, and there was like two other people there. They were like equally crazy about it, and I don't even know where they ended up. But uh, we did that a couple times, and then. After that, I was like, well, let's just, you know, see if we can get more people involved. So we started promoting it, um, trying to get you know, people know that there was a, a meetup group. We were doing it once a month and um, we just kept doing it. That was like in 08 and we kept doing it. 2012 came around 
we decided to do a word count, applied for that, got that. That was our first word count. And we've done five, I think five, maybe six so far, 2012, 13, 14, 16, 17, and 18, six. We just did our sixth word count. So, and no, yeah, 2019, seven. I can't believe it. We have done seven. It's hard to believe, but I guess we have. So yeah, yeah. we've been, yeah, that's, um, that's my story of, uh, you know, nutshell. I, I love it. And, and like I said, I met you at my first ever WordCamp, which I think was 2014. Um, right. I actually yeah, yeah. Just showed up in my uh, Facebook like memories the other day, the mm -hmm. picture of my badge I took with my phone. And, uh, oh, wow, yeah. and I liked, I, I, I know I've told you the story before, but I actually posted on Facebook how excited I was to go to my first WordPress camp. I didn't even know like what to call it. I was like, I'm at WordPress camp, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And from oh, there, okay. I was like, that was so cool. I went to Toronto. The mm -hmm. next year I went to WordCamp US and um, yeah. I applied to speak with, I tried to speak at WordCamp Buffalo the next year. And you guys were like, yeah, do you want to also help us organize it? Oh, so organize it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know it's, uh, we are not very good at organizing and you probably know that, but um, we are, you know, me, we meaning basically me and Andy. Uh, and then along came Ron Brennan, who's been really helpful with us with that um, and a few other people hop in uh, on the organization thing so um, yeah that's been I think the hardest part about work for, for me about the work as community is like I always feel bad that I'm not better at you know growing the the, the community here in Buffalo but it's really because I'm not a, a very good uh, promoter or organizer and that sort of thing but I try so I don't know. I think you have some, you have steady people involved. You've got people in your Slack group. Yeah. I, uh, I think you've done a good job for sure. Now, when you, you, so you're teaching people, you're teaching students, and then you're also helping people out in the meetup um, and at word camps and things like that. When you think about um, looking at the sites that you've seen and instruction, what are some of the things you think that sometimes people don't necessarily focus on that they should? And things that you tell your students particularly don't forget to include, you know, X, Y, Z. What are some of the things that you think we need to pay more attention to? Yeah, I think there's, um, there's like a feeling when you finish a website that you're done and that becomes like the worst atti attitude you can take. It's like, uh, you know, everybody thinks that if it's digital, it's, it's permanent, you know, like, so as soon as you do your, your website, it's, it's like, I'm all done. It's a website, so it'll be here forever. And then you go back to it a few days or, you know, a few hours later, and there's just something wrong. It's incredible how fast digital stuff decays. Like it's, you know, you think paper that, well, that can yellow and get brittle or burn or whatever. So and paper is not permanent, but it's actually more permanent than I find like than your website because your website is just so in the wild. And there's so many things to just trying to not just intentionally progress is happening, but also, you know, maliciously with robots and um, viruses that are trying to hack into it, that it just becomes this like, child that you have to raise you know you have to like you maintain it like a garden or something and if you don't and most people don't they just don't want to be done with it it's like a milestone it's over i need to work on something else now that website was my job for two months or two years I finished it now i can do something that i really wanted to do and the website just get abandoned so that's no, that's, that's really good advice and if you don't think that the scenery of wordpress changes quickly log out of your site, log back in four hours later and see how many plugins need to be updated. Because it's constant, absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, that's actually really, really good advice. Yeah. What's something, and, and you've been involved a long time now, but what's something that you have learned over the years that you wish you'd known when you first got started with web design or WordPress in particular? Um, I, I wish that I had, from the start, had a better uh, foundation of like, a good environment for you know, an optimal environment, like had a good relationship with like a hosting company or um, yeah, I had a, if I had a chance to think more about, about this, I probably have a better answer. Um, something I wish I knew. Uh, I guess. It's harder, to, it's harder to answer when you've been involved with it over the years like you have, because you've seen it adjust and change. 
Yeah. Yeah. I guess like one thing I, I always feel like I could have done better was be more open minded about what the what kind of work I was making. Like uh, you know, having very tunnel vision about the way to get the, something done uh is counterproductive and it, it ends up hurting it can end up hurting you quite a bit if you're not open to somebody might suggest something that you just think is hogwash like oh you should use this plugin and you're like oh, come on that's yeah everyone knows that plugin sucks and that attitude is just so easy to fall into uh and i've tried i think over time to become less and less like that but i probably was a lot more um i don't know just like close-minded about the way things were supposed to get done and how things were supposed to not just function but also like look like you, know, you, you don't want a, you don't want to put that on your website don't no don't do that don't do that it was just so much don't do this don't do that that i wish i you know i try not to do uh more and more but i probably did a lot in the beginning well, it's like, you know, back in the day, even four or five years ago, everybody would say, oh, don't use Jetpack, it floats your site. Well, that may or may not be true anymore, depending on how you use it and that kind of thing. So letting go of some of those preconceived ideas, because things do grow and change. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. right on. Absolutely. Like, uh, there was a time in my life, I thought nothing was going to be better than Hotmail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Yahoo Mail, you know, and now it's all Gmail, so. <laughs> yeah, I had Hotmail. <laughs> Yeah. I remember Facebook came out and you <clears throat> you could only get on Facebook if you had an EDU account. And I was like, hey, great. I'm at uh, college. I have an EDU account. So I thought, Me too. You know, I was an insider, but no, anybody can get in. Yeah. I, I was one of those people I worked for University of Rochester at the time. And I was like, ooh, I can get in on this. I know. Yeah. I felt all special. It felt exclusive, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we were a special club. That <laughs> was fun. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, you only have to be 13 and you can lie about that. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. so okay back to wordpress <laughs> when you think over all of the different word camps you've been to and the different meetups you've been to the people you've heard speak the opportunities you've had to speak and um, i know you've been to WordCamp us's and we you and i have been at a bunch of different camps together and separately mm -hmm. i think i was surprised i walked into WordCamp pittsburgh and i was like oh my gosh there's ben and andy <laughs> you know yeah. kind of thing it's like that's right but it was like, I didn't know you were going to be here. Um, when you think back over all the different talks you've heard and given and people you've run into and just, you know, the whole experience, what's something or two somethings, whatever, that kind of rise up for you as being like, you know, monumental moments or aha moments or just, wow, that was really cool. Um, really memorable one last year, maybe two years ago, WordCamp uh, Europe. Um, and I have to, I wish I, I have to look up his name again, but he did a talk on CSS Grid in, in France, WordCamp in uh, Paris. Um, and it was just so well done and eye-opening that I just, it was, I love learning about code, like new ways of code and how code's changing and evolving. And like, it really inspired me to kind of dig back into, you know, CSS and how much it had changed because <clears throat> for a long time, I was doing things the same way um, and trying to uh, not really finding anything that was like, like I wanted to really dig into. But the CSS grid stuff that he was showing was was um, was really, really eye opening and awesome. So that was a great one. And that's maybe because it wasn't just about WordPress. It was more of a general talk. I, I do like talks that extend beyond just, you know, the WordPress uh, universe. So that. Uh, that may be why I like that one. Um, anytime I've, I've seen um, JJJ, um, John James Jacoby speak, it's always a great experience. Um, he's just uh, he's just an awesome speaker. Uh, and I actually, I used to draw pictures of the speakers and I could go through all of them and it would probably spark my memory on which ones I, uh, I got a lot out of. Let me try and do that. I know I was um, blessed to have you draw one of my pictures this year when I was. Oh yeah. Speaking. Yeah, but I was, and you're like, do you want me to post this on Twitter? I'm like, heck yeah! It's like a badge <laughs> of honor. Ben Ruby. Oh uh, man, yeah, yeah. That was um, I don't know. I'm I'm sort of I got to get back on that again. I, I I usually, I used to do it like consistently, and then I stopped. Um, I just wasn't as good at uh, keeping up with it. Oh yeah, Mika Epstein was a great talk. I don't know where I saw her.
her speak. It was um, really early on, maybe one of the first ones I was at, but uh, I drew her. And then, um, yeah, that, that was good. I'm just looking at my pictures. They're on my website. Okay. If you go to my uh, bendunkle.com and then you go on blog and then you go on drawings, you can find a lot of stuff there. Oh, that's cool. And for anybody who doesn't know, Mika is involved a lot with um, gatekeeping the plugins and vetting the plugins as a volunteer for WordPress. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so that was a that was a good talk. I'm just looking through these. Well, yeah. Speaking of good talks, I had the good fortune of sitting in your talk in Hamilton a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I think um, I can't remember if she said it or tweeted it, but I think it was Megan Haynes that was like, "I want Ben Dunkel to draw everything that I do too," because mm -hmm. your your slides for that show for that um, your slideshow for that talk where all your own hand doodles that you're done. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, so what you had to say was really awesome, but like waiting to see what came up on the next slide that you'd drawn was equally as fascinating. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that's great. Thanks. <laughs> Actually, that's so funny you say that, because like I did that talk back in Rochester in 2018 or 17 even. And then I got, the, I got feedback. Um, one of the fee people who gave me feedback hated the drawings like they thought it was like the silliest stupidest thing ever and i should never do any more of them and something so so it's good to hear that uh you like them so yeah you know there's one person that didn't and everybody else either liked them or just didn't tell you they did <laughs> right exactly <laughs> but anyway that was a really funny that, that, that was great and you had some really good um advice for people and for, for anybody who does, wasn't there it was specifically on um wordpress for artists correct yeah, yeah, there was um, WordPress for, it was originally WordPress for artists, but then I thought it should be more specific. WordPress for visual artists was right. how I kind of revise it. And it's really for anybody whose primary um, concern for their website is, is displaying their artwork or their photography or their images that they've, you know, that they've created um, with uh, and all the different challenges that, that presents and how that requires a different kind of approach to your website and so on. Yeah. It's interesting because as a photographer, because I, I mean, I'm an amateur photographer, you mm -hmm. want to be able to display like the best resolution possible, but that kills a website if you're displaying something with the highest resolution possible. And quite honestly, the resolution isn't going to make that big a difference when you're looking at it on a computer, for example, or on a phone. Um, yeah, or on, yeah, on, a, on a laptop or something. It's not going to have yeah. the same impact. And it's probably best that you don't display it in its, all its glory because um and so one person brought up at that last talk the uh, uh the chances are if somebody downloads your image and tries to print it on a poster and sell it it's going to look like garbage because that's not the right medium it hasn't been optimized or the resolution's wrong and so it's yeah. maybe a good thing that you're using low res images but um, but you still want to make them look good so. yeah Talk a little bit, and I always call it the wrong name, but talk a little bit about the plugin that you developed specifically yeah. for this purpose. I, I want to call it shrink wrap. Yeah, shrink wrap. Shrink wrap. I always call it saran wrap, but I know saran wraps wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that'll be a version, like we'll name the next version saran wrap. After you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I um, the first time I gave the talk, somebody mentioned shrink wrapping images, and I was like, what's that? And they sent me a link to uh, an article on a blog about how you can take an invisible GIF file, tiny little GIF file, and stretch it, like expand it width and height as big as the image that it's going to be on top of, and then position it so that it's on top of it. And then somebody who tried to right click on your image and save it or right click on it and copy it and then paste it into like another program, they would only get the GIF file. So I thought that's, you know, that's kind of tricky. Um, that's nifty. And people might like to have to be able to do that. It doesn't seem too disingenuous. Like disabling right click is something people generally frown upon. And like uh, watermarks can make your web pages, your pictures not look as good. So I just thought, all right, well, what if I made a plugin out of this? So I, I have some pretty good PHP skills and some JavaScript skills, but I'm not a superstar by any means. So I had help from some other people at that at that WordCamp, 
And I think I just spent the entire afternoon at the happiness bar of, of people and we sort of crafted it out. And then I got, I did a little more work on it, tested it, and then submitted it to the plugin directory. Now it's on there. So Streamcraft Images, if you, if you install it, it just, any image that's on your website instantly gets an invisible GIF on top of it so that people can't right click and download the image. They have to like take, take a screenshot or disable JavaScript and nobody even knows how to do that stuff. No, right. it's not true. It's funny, they right click it, they, they open it and they're like, something's wrong. Right. I, it, it's, it's empty. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing. See that, but then they might get mad at you like, you know, you, try, you tricked me and then they might send you bad uh, vibes. Eh, it's a free plugin, what are they gonna do? <laughs> Yeah. Well, the person who's the artist that make it. Yeah, yeah. They make it. Um, somebody might throw paint on their painting at the uh, next opening. No, but uh, there's a few ideas I have for it. Like maybe you could right-click on it and it would say like the image would say some a message, or, you know, or the name of the image could be like "Stop trying to steal my images, buddy" or something. Uh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so go to the thing and give me some feedback. Yeah, I love that. I'll, I'll help you think of a good a good uh, thing to put on it because that's fun. That's yeah. really funny. Uh, and then you also work with students. And I have been fortunate last summer, I think it was last summer, might have been two years ago now that, uh, I guess it was two years ago, actually, you had WP Campus at right. Yep. And, yeah. uh, and, and I got to be a volunteer there. So I got to mm -hmm. attend and take pictures of that day. And that was a lot of fun. And I saw you interacting with some of your students that were there that day, too. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw, you know, you have some students who have uh, physical disabilities as well, mm -hmm. and that you are just adamant about WordPress being um, accessible for every person of every ability. So that was kind of cool to see your students be able to excel with WordPress because of the way that WordPress has been accessible and hopefully will continue to be. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, that's what I, I always think we should, um, when we have a WordPress meetup, um, it should be streamed uh, on, you know, uh, something, Google or this, or uh, Zoom, so people can, who can't get there can still participate. Um, so that's a goal I have for the Buffalo Meetup is to just have a, have a, an open camera. And we've tried that a couple of times and with varying levels of success. Sometimes people hop in that they're like, who the heck is this? And um, so you have to sort of, we got to figure out how to do that better. But uh, I, I do want to keep promoting, I think that the WordPress and the digital wor world in general is such a great place for people who are uh, challenged with any kind of disabilities that, that are physical, they can't, they can't move their hands or they can't, you know, um, get to places where they need to be. But, you know, in the right setup, you have a computer, you can do a lot of things. So, mm -hmm. um, so we should make that, uh, work on getting that better. Yeah, I agree. That's pretty cool. And that WP campus has um, been behind the whole audit of the Gutenberg block editor and mm -hmm. um, ha has given WordPress a nice path to move forward to make things better. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to mention before I move into our rapid fire questions? Um, if you want, uh, well, yeah, come to the next WordPress Buffalo meetup. It's going to be... <laughs> First Thursday in July. Um, we're not sure the location, so stay tuned on that um, because we've been bouncing around a couple places for now. But join the meetup. Go to wpbuffalo.com and uh, join the Slack channel. And you can read some notes from our past meetups. And uh, that's about it. And for our listeners who are around the world, because we have people, we have a lot of people in India um, paying attention now. Okay. Find your local meetup. Just go to meetup.com and look for WordPress in your local meetup directory too. I mean, you're welcome to come to Buffalo, wherever you are in the world. But yeah. if it's not feasible, then find one near you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, if, and when you log into your next WordPress site, look over in the um, upcoming events widget in your dashboard, and you'll see anything that's uh, officially listed. We recently became part of that official list, so that's a good thing. That's definitely a good thing. People can find you a lot easier. And sure. in Rochester, we have a lot of people coming because they saw it there, which is yeah. really cool. Yeah, last meetup we had one person, maybe at least one person, but um, the change of venue kind of, we, but we froze people. It. it was a good time. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. All right, so here are my rapid fire questions. You ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so tell me, you know, two, three, or four, what you consider must have plugins. And when you're, and you're teaching a lot, so, you know, this is uh, gonna come from a, an instructor professor 
right. basically. Uh, so tell us what, what do you think? What do we have to have on our site? Um, you definitely need a security site. I think the most important security fact uh, issue is uh, brute force attempts at the um, uh, at the, the WP admin login screen. And uh, so I'm I'm a I like to use as minimal as possible plugins to do just targeted things. So the one I use for that is Loginizer. Loginizer. L O G I N I Z E R. Great plugin. Uh, also, make sure that your website's, and I don't know if there's a plugin to do this, but you've got to have HTTPS, so get a certificate, run your site under a certificate. Um, but then uh, Duplicator has been a great plugin for me to move sites. I'm migrating sites quite a bit from one server to another. And I haven't found anything that works as well as uh, Duplicator for that. Um, I usually put uh, Insanity on my um, server, or my site, because it, uh, blocks the original images from being uploaded. So you don't have your 20 megabyte raw image getting, um, you know, not necessarily displayed on your site, but stored in your server space. And that becomes a big mess. And um, other plugins. I do like um, advanced custom fields. They've got probably the best support I've ever seen in terms of helping you if you've got issues with your plugin. Um, I really like Contact Form 7. It is a free plugin in, in, the, in one of those very rare plugins that has an extremely huge user base and has absolutely no pro version. I just think that that's amazing that uh, anybody does that. And um, you know, almost every plugin I install has the upgrade to pro. And there's nothing wrong with that. People have to make money, but uh, it just always amazes me that um, they can do what they do. So, so that's a rapid fire plugin list. <laughs> but wpbuffalo.com has got some more. We put featured plugins on that website. Oh, that's good. I, I actually never looked at that page. I'll have to go take a look later. Yeah. Give me some recommendations. I will. I'll be happy to. Um, I know that, you know, for any donations pages, give. Right over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a free version in the um, WordPress plugin directory, too. That's great. When you started with WordPress and or during your journey with WordPress, have you ever had a mentor that that has worked with you? Somebody that you look up to that's given you advice? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, JJJ has been a mentor for me. Uh, Andy Staple, big, big mentor. Ron Brennan, those guys give me a lot of good feedback. Um, and um, mentors, mentors. Um, uh, Mika's been a huge mentor for me, especially with the plug, going through the plugin process, but also just like, you know, getting to see somebody who's really super active on the contribution side um, and see how they, how they work. Um, there's so many, uh, I'd have to, you know, like I, I, if I give me five uh, minutes, I'd have, you know, a bazillion for you, but uh, yeah, those are an, hour, an hour's length. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Who is somebody in the WordPress community that you admire and why? Um, yeah, you know who I really think is amazing? Um, Mel Choice is, is um, one of the most uh, active contributors. And the fact that it's, all, it's, it's mainly focused on design really gives people who are, uh, want to get involved, but maybe feel like they're not, um, you know, code freaks or really great with, development or servers and stuff that it gives them an outlet for them to um, to get involved so that, uh, that she's always um, been somebody that I think is just a great part of the community so I'd say her yeah actually and um, I'm on the organizing team for WordCamp US this year and so is Mel mm -hmm. and uh, she's on the design team so she's working on the website and everything and I'm on the PR communications team so I've been feeding her a lot of the um, content i've been writing content and she's been putting it on and it's like it's so cool to work together with people who are like mm -hmm. so amazing at what they do i mean everybody at give i'm not saying that the people i work with aren't amazing what they do they are it's just really cool in a volunteer in a volunteer way to have people who are so well qualified in their roles as well i agree she's mm -hmm. a great choice no pun intended yeah. that was good. Yeah. <laughs> What's something that you want to learn in WordPress that you haven't had an opportunity or haven't tackled yet? Um, well, I'm trying to make a theme that follows the, uh, you know, like the theme developer's handbook official 
kind of guidelines. And so I've been working on that. And I, I always feel like, I mean, I can make themes no problem, but I'm sure that they're not, they could never go on the, the um, repository. Repository, yeah. They, there's, there's just too many things missing because I really just build them to do exactly what I want them to do. Uh, so that's something that I'm trying to, to learn is, is the, the um, you know, the more uh, globally focused theme development approach. That's one thing. And then uh, on the other side of things, I, I really want to uh, understand the whole um, JavaScript side of where WordPress is going that, um, or the headless CMS or the whole static HTML file generated from the, you know, WordPress at WP admin as a independent entity that doesn't necessarily connect to your website. It just is there for you to manage your content, but using it outside of the box that way. It's something I'm really curious about. So try to spend a little more, more time studying up on that. Talking about the theme development, what, one of the most fun um, sessions I've sat in at a WordCamp was you and Andy Staple doing a building a theme in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's entertaining for sure because oh, yeah. nothing ever goes exactly like you want it to. I think once you or he referred to it as, oh, you like that circus show. <laughs> that was kind of fun too. But that's, it was really, uh, and I, you had everybody like glued to the, to the screen watching you develop this th simple theme, of course, by showing people that it can be done. So what inspired you guys to do that? Um, well, we, we both make themes and we, we have, uh, we share a lot of the same like approaches to how a theme should be built. But on the other hand, we both do things our own way. And then we both, you know, in fun, criticize each other when we think the other person's doing something wrong. So when you get us together trying to make a theme, you, all that stuff comes out. So like the stuff we really think is important comes across really well. And then if, if I do something, uh, and Andy's, and he'll just say, well, like, why the heck are you, uh, what, don't do that, just move, you know, let me take over. Or I'll say, you know, nice going there, like, did you not see that missing quote or something? You know, so it's just, it's kind of like we banner back and forth about the, the way each other works, but it makes for pretty entertaining stuff, I guess. It's a little Laurel and Hardy-ish, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. We should do, we'll do another one soon. Right. And if anybody wants to, I think that um, you did that at WordCamp Pittsburgh. Yeah. So if you go to WordPress.tv and look at Pittsburgh 2017, you're going to find yeah. Yeah. that for sure. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Uh, what's one of the biggest WordPress mistakes you've ever made and what did you learn from it? Um, biggest WordPress mistakes I've ever made was, um, I think I just, I, I let, or okay, let me think. It was a, a student who was making a website and the student graduated and so the website wasn't quite done yet and there was some major security flaws with it and but when graduation comes it's like people just they're done it's almost like the same idea with the website they're just they don't want to even think about anything they want to just start fresh and that was her approach and i should have been more uh following up on how far she'd gotten but we left some bad holes in the site and so the the server got you know immediately attack uh and so then um getting the, the repercussions of that in terms of fixing up that site but also other sites on that server were like a real real eye-opener for me about security um and it, it wasn't her fault i mean she she knew and she you know when, when we were finishing up she's like i'm not gonna be able to you know close these doors you know that right and i was like oh yeah i'll take care of it you just go sail off into the sunset and It'll be fine. You know, she'd done all of her research with it. And so it was mainly form based, and, you know, people, anytime you have forms, I mean, forms are like, they're like, um, yeah, they're just, it's like, if you cut yourself, that's a form. That's like a text field. You got to put a bandaid on it or you got to disinfect it. If you let that thing just sit there and fester, you're going to get sick. You're going to get infected. So forms are holes in your website. You have to close up, you know, monitor somebody. Yeah. 
nobody so far has said, well, I made mistakes, but I didn't learn anything. We all learned definitely oh, yeah. from some of those WordPress yeah. mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> Big yeah. time. Um, what's your proudest WordPress moment? Um, I think it was probably when I was at uh, WordCamp US and uh, Matt Mullenweg, you know, we got a big crowd and he, got, he gave me a shout out for making uh, the icon. So I uh, got, I, he's like, stand up. So I stood up and everybody clapped and cheered and you know, I felt like a superstar. You know? So that was my one, my one minute of uh, fame or 30 seconds. That's awesome. You can go to WordCamp TV and search for that. It's right. You can see that too, because it'll yeah, be on the, the word, right? Yeah, yeah. Stay to the word. Yeah. That's awesome. That yeah, you cool. are a rock star. You are you are a shining star in the WordPress, at least the I local know. WordPress community. I, I, for I don't me. like to feel. I don't like to feel like that because, honestly, the people that are rock stars are the people that are there grinding on it, and there's so many people that do that all day long, all week long. They just. But as up. far as far as like being part of the community, I've had issues before with sites that I was tearing my hair out, and you've solved them for me. That's a rock star move. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, well, you're a rock star. In that case, you have so many people. So I try. We can all be rock stars. Yeah. Yeah. Rock stars. We should WP rock stars. I bet. I bet somebody already bought it. (laughs) If not, they will now. (laughs) Really. (laughs) If you site available for one thousand dollars. That's right. (laughs) If you want that, Michelle, I can sell it back to you. If you weren't doing the jobs that you do now, so you work in web, you're, you're an instructor, you're an artist, if you weren't doing those jobs, what's another career that you might like to attempt? Mm, maybe like, um, I like motor scooters, so maybe building motor scooters and fixing them up. That's um, cool. Maybe like refurb- like refurbishing old things, yeah. Yeah, I have a Vespa, but it's, it's a lot of work, but I don't really have time to to work on it but um i like doing that stuff i just like play a lot of video games like chess or uh I probably play i play fortnite now i've been like addicted to that game and i suck at it but somehow <laughs> it got into my head um yeah usually like i get really so into something that i don't know what it would be because i'm already into so many other things so yeah. definitely something would come up that's cool yeah. what's something on your bucket list Oh man, bucket list. Um, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. I want to go to Peru. Oh, okay. I just saw. Maybe it was on a cooking show, but it looks like the most beautiful place. So maybe Peru. Llamas and alpacas in Peru, I think, yeah. right? Yeah, That's right. It seems like it's got like every climate. It's got like jungles and deserts and mountains and like that sounds. Pretty amazing, but that's a travel thing. In terms of the bucket list, we could do something. Um, yeah. A lot of people say travel is on their bucket list. Yeah, yeah, maybe that. I'm not really cool. big on traveling, like the process of it, but when I'm there, I love it. But I just yeah. like, getting there sucks, but being there is awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know how that feels. Um, and last, show us or tell us about one of your hidden talents. So oh, something okay. the WordPress community might not know about you. Sure. Uh, well, there's like chess, but that's not hidden, is it? I told you about that. Um, well, I didn't know about it until today. Yeah. But yeah, but I can't really show you that. I have to get like a chess board out and get one of my kids to come play me. Um, let me think about that for a little longer and get back to you. I can't. <laughs> my, my very first guest, Allie Nimmons told us that her secret talent is being able to shop without a list and know exactly how much she's spending. And if she's got a budget, know what she has to put back at the end. So you don't have to show us. You can oh, tell us. About it. Oh, okay. I know. I'm like, I wish I had that talent. Yeah. Right. Um, calculator. Yeah. Shoot. Man, I wish I had known. I wish I would have such a good one to say, but I can't think of it. Uh, cooking. I can, co- I'm pretty good at cooking. Oh, that's like, good. I can cook like, I um I have like three things that I can cook really well. Like I can make chicken wings really good. Oh. I can make pretty good. Um, uh, I can make pretty good uh, like fried rice stuff. And um, so yeah, I like cooking, but that's not very exciting. I don't know. It is for people like me who don't cook. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I, right. But you know, I don't like cook 
for like a lot of people, I'll just cook for my kids or my family and stuff. But you know, once in a while, we'll have friends over and I'll try and go all out with the cooking. And I usually get some pretty good feedback. People That's have, awesome. Sometimes, but sometimes I know it sucks. <laughs> I'm not, I'm a hack, but I like it. And to wrap it up, because I actually have somebody coming on the show in another six minutes and they might buzz in before we're done. Um, tell us how people can find you online. So how are they going to find you on your social and your website? Uh, Bendunkle.com. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm, Instagram is probably the most common. I don't do a lot of Twitter or Facebook. Instagram is uh, D-M-A-P-R-O-F. D-M-A-Prof. Like the program I'm in is Digital Media Arts at Canisius College. So I'm a professor there. So it's D-M-A-Prof. Somebody else took my favorite, which is Empire of Light. That's the one I use on Twitter. Um, and I'm also Empire of Light on WordPress.org. So um so you can get me there too awesome and we'll put all of those in your in the post too so people will be able to click through for this Ooh. awesome okay. thank you so much for being on the show today any last words um yeah let's uh get, get to buffalo and come to the next wordpress event and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be able to chat live sounds good awesome well i know i look forward to seeing you at the next thing we're together at and uh Appreciate you being here today and appreciate you um, with all the things you've helped me with over the years and all the contributions that you've given to WordPress. Oh, thank you too. Thanks, Ben. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>